Welcome back everybody. Today is going to be a paint along with me and if you want the traceable I have a whole slew of them plus this one in my membership for $2.99 a month on the first level and many many um, videos if you want uh, more than just the uh, traceable. So today we're going to be doing uh, this here. So it's a, a zinnia. It could be different flowers. Um, to me it looks like a zinnia. could be uh, a dahlia. What, it is whatever you want it to be, basically. So I have the downloadable for you if you want to paint along. And this is what we'll be doing today. And I took out some of my jelly prints that I've done in the past. Some of them are recent, some of them are a couple years old. And just to show you, you don't have to start off fresh with a background and everything. You can actually use your jelly prints, and these are the botanical ones, so they would be actually, uh, they would work quite well. So you can, um, you can always change the color with, of the backgrounds too. So if you have some and you're not uh, too keen on the color of blue, or maybe you would need um a gradation of um, light to dark or whatever this can be glazed over with a darker color to do that so look through your papers it's a lot of times you can use these up and we I don't know about you guys but I have a ton of them and they need to be used up before I start making any more um, they are addictive this one's pretty. I like this one with the mauve and a little bit of green and blue in it. I could change this up and add a little bit of blue because there is some white shining through there and that would show up as blue and the um, purple would be a little more darker purple. Um, this is just a monotone one so it could be um, you could put anything on it pretty well and uh, it would improve it. This one had a little bit of stenciling in it. This would be pretty also. It's nice colors of blue. Might not even have to do too much to that. And this one here, it's, uh, it's in a different format, landscape, but uh, where did I put it? We could use that format also. So it would fit. So either way, uh, landscape or portrait. So it would be up to you on how you want it to do it. This might be pretty. Um, I kind of like this is pretty too. It's got a little bit of gold shimmer in it. Some more yellow and kind of a pale blue. There's a darker one. If you want to go completely different, there's a orange and yellow. We could add other colors to this and change the color altogether if you wanted to. I'm going to be sticking with the colors in this. So more on your yellow gold side. So if you want to, um, it's kind of nice to think of your opposite. So if you went with more of a blue purple color, would be probably a, a nicer uh, contrast for it. Um, I think this is too dark. Green, no. I could change this up. Uh, make it into a little bit more of a blue 
color. This one I like, uh, but I think the butterfly would disappear in it. And I'm kind of leaning towards this one. It already has a darker shade on the bottom. This one's pretty too. This is more of a cobalt blue and, and um, cerulean blue. This is more on the uh, aqua side. This would also work too, the purple. Purple and yellow with the brown would probably look really nice. And this is nice too. I think that one will work. I think that one's too busy. I think it's between this one and this one. These three. Uh, I think this one. Less I have to do with this one because it's already got a lighter area. I can I can darken this on the bottom if I wanted to. All right. So what I'm going to do? I got my. have a clipboard here that I could use to uh, hold it down and um, if you just want to paint in this area we could always tape it um, let's see I think I'll just tape it on here about right just so that it doesn't um, wrinkle up maybe I should put it on something hmm. I want something that's not too side. I'm going to keep the border. Sometimes it's nice to have a, a border on your acrylic paintings. This is just uh, washi tape that I'm using. So if you're going to paint a uh, background, it's very easy. Pick a color you want to do. You don't have to do it the same color as I'm doing. You can have it a different shade if you want. But you want it, if you're doing it the blue and green colors, you want to um, a lighter blue on the top, shading down to a green, kind of a mid-tone green on the bottom. Now you can do that on a jelly plate or do it with a brush. Either way is good. have that and I'm going to probably put a little bit of a green hue on the bottom here so what I want to do 
there is actually a lot of acrylic paint already on this so I'm going to add just a tinge of green on the very bottom so if your jelly uh, print is all one color you can do this change it up just remember that whatever color you are co are covering with another color it's going to change that color especially if it's transparent and I'm going to use a transparent paint so uh, the green and blue is going to make it a blue green so you have to keep that in mind it's actually a really good way of learning your colors with um, playing with glazes to see what colors you will get. Just cleaning this off a bit because I'm not sure but I think there was watercolor in this and I don't want my paint to get contaminated. Alright, I think that should do. Alright, so, if you see in this here, it's, it's a very, um, it's not a green green, it's more of a blue green on the bottom part, the background here. And then it goes into that more of a bluey mauve color. Well, I'm not going to stick exactly to those colors. The background can be your own thing. And I am going to use um, artist grade for this part. So I have a thalo green blue shade here. And if you see on the top part of this, you'll see those bars, those black bars. And they've painted over top of them. So you can see that it's a fairly transparent um, paint. So this will be transparent when I add a little bit of water to it. Now I don't want a lot of water. When you already have uh, a dried acrylic paint on your substrate and it's not paper like gesso even do not uh, water your acrylic down a lot so yeah, probably the best amount would be 30 percent I wouldn't go past that if you have already a sealed substrate because you run the danger of having your paint peel when it's dry. You don't want that to happen. Okay, let's, uh, I gotta pop my chat out. Let's see who's here. Hi! <laughs> Sorry I didn't have my chat going. Hey Devin! Z, good to see you. Kathy, do you ever use gouache? Actually, I don't own any, <laughs> Sandra. Uh, and it's funny you should say that because I have been researching it. Because I have seen some very interesting um, illustrations done with gouache. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go, if I were to get some, I don't think I would go with the, um, water reactive gouache. I would probably want to stick to the acrylic gouache and that way it doesn't move. 
Um, I've seen a lot of artists talk about it and a lot of them tend to go for the acrylic gouache. Your gouache is stinky? <laughs> okay, what'd you get? You didn't get tempera, did you? Because tempera is made out of egg. And it can get stinky. It shouldn't be stinky. Now, um, I haven't looked into any of the, like, Arteza or um, these other ones, the less expensive ones. So... I've only been looking at the um, artist grade ones. Okay, so I've added water to my brush. Now this will be a glaze. Mine is reactivating from Home Sense. Pink, oh, Jack. Oh, okay. It's not tempera? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know enough about gouache. I don't know if it can go bad or not. I, th I just thought that most gouache would be um, kind of like watercolor. So it never goes bad, basically. I'm just going to just throw in a bit here and there. Um, maybe I want a little bit of darker color coming up here maybe on the side. Uh, it was King Art Brand. Not gone bad smell, just weird plastic smell. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Can't help you. Thanks, Devin. Okay, so just a smidge, just to change it a little bit. Now, this is paper, remember, so I'm going to dry in between because it's going to um, get sopping wet. Oh, okay, Vandra. Yeah, maybe it goes bad. I don't know. Don't know enough about it. The way I look at it, too, is um, I've looked, I've been watching people use the um, acrylic gouache and I'm thinking well what's the difference from an acrylic gouache to say a craft paint really craft paint is very opaque so would it be the same I don't know You just used it from the tube to the packet, so it doesn't, I don't think it was spoilage. Hmm, I don't know. You'll have to look that one up. Thank you. All right, so this can be transferred on, and I've just got some um, tracing or carbon paper here. 
so I'll put it kind of in the center, I think. And make sure you tape it down just in case you miss some spots, and then you can put it back down. So let's see, I'm going to actually cut the top of this so I can tape it to my top part here, just in case I miss something. All right. So now you need to transfer it. So I've got my papers down and I find best just to use a um, ballpoint pen in a different color. So that way you get to see if where you've been. Now if you wanted to, you could always make this into a mixed media piece and um, add a butterfly from the calendar that you've got or magazine, that type of thing. If you don't want to do all the bits and pieces. I'm just going to draw the wings in. I'm not going to put all the uh, little markings in yet just because I want to put a base coat on so there's no point in putting all those marks in if you're just going to paint right over it again. I just want to see where the wings are and the body, let's see, there's a leg there and that's the foot, there's his body And his eyeball. And I think that's all I need. I have the separation of the wings. Now I'm just going to put the flower in. This is going to be a fairly easy flower the way I'm going to paint. It's more about the brush stroke and using my um, rake brush. These flowers usually have a, a little bit of ribbing in their petals. So that'll give you um, kind of a shadow and a highlight when you have ribbing. So we're going to take advantage of that with uh, double loading my brush with two different colors. So, I don't know if you guys heard, but I have the traceable up on the community page for the memberships, if you want to play along. And this comes from the... This is an awesome book. So if you want to get, I don't know if you can get it or anymore, but it's a great book. Country's Edge by um, Shirley Koning, Koenig, Koenig. And I have permission for using these. to teach you.
I know this takes a little bit of time. It's kind of monotonous doing these tracings, but unless you are comfortable with drawing your own, I know a lot of people would rather trace, so that's why I gave you that link. Sometimes flowers are a little bit hard to do, especially when there's a lot of petals. It takes a little more time. I find tracing, um, it's less time. Plus you can reuse your tracing when you're adding multiple layers to your flower. I'm not worried about if I'm going off my lines. <laughs> you can be exact if you want. All flowers are different. Or none of them are all the same. So, so, so don't worry if you, you're not following the line prop, like right on. Have fun with it. And then these little oops stamens. Put these in. Now a lot of this um, will probably be covered up. So that's why it's nice to have keep your copy of your traceable. Because you probably need to go back over it. Once you've traced it. Don't remove it off your platform. Make sure you've taped it. So you can just lift it. Lift your paper, your tracing, and see if you've missed anything. Okay, so that didn't come out hard enough. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I can take my carbon and I'm going to just put this around the back of this. I'm going to keep it on there just in case I need to put it back on because I don't want to have to try and replace it to the exact part. your painting do what you want with it I'm just showing what I'm doing but if you want to mix it up with mixed media I think that's great there's so many ways of doing this <laughs> uh, Devin do you have the antiquarian sticker book they have lots of pics oh good idea Kim All right, so this is dry now. I'll just get my picture here so I can see what they've done. And I'm just going to wipe this palette. I don't want all of that green. Okay, so now I'm going to do this kind of a ochre yellow kind of color. So we're going to start off with the flower first. So it's we're going to need some white or buff you could use or cream. Yellow, tan, white, 
Okay, so there's a number of yellows you can use. Um, there's a Naples yellow, but as you can see, it's semi-opaque. That's good, because we want to cover this blue. Uh, or you can use a cadmium yellow light with a little bit of titanium white or buff in it. Um, most people probably have the uh, cadmium yellow of some sort. So I'll just put a splurt of that in there. If you have craft paint and you want to use those, you could use a goldenrod would probably work. I believe you can get a cadmium yellow. Um, ochre color also with a little bit of white in it. This is a warm gray, but it's kind of a buffy color, too. So I'm just going to put some of that in there. You don't need a lot. And some white. I like working with um, smaller brushes when I'm working in small areas. Um, I tend to go with um, let's see, flats. If you have a flat in a fairly sh small size, not too wide. Uh, an acrylic brush of some sort. I have uh, a number 10 and a number 6. So they're flats. And paper towels for sure you'll need. So if I mix some of this Cadmium Yellow with some of this brownish color, it dulls it so it's not so bright looking. And that's what I want. I don't want a bright yellow. I want kind of want a, it's a more of an ochre color. And then you're going to base coat pretty well your all your areas. And because I have the buff in this, it's pretty well going to cover most of that blue. Because yellow can be a very transparent color, so whatever you're using, you might find it a little difficult if you don't add either buff or, or a white to it. Now I'm going to kind of uh, paint up to the, those lines in the pattern. I'm not going to paint over them yet because I want to see the separation of them so I know where my flowers are or my petals, sorry. Because eventually we will cover it up with 
shades and highlights. But this is just the base coat. This is how I like to paint. Is I put a base coat of whatever I see to be the middle color. Goes on pretty much the whole thing. There are exceptions, but most of the time it's uh, pretty well the whole area that I'm painting. Now if your paint is still really see-through, you may have to put a second coat on or before you do the whole thing, maybe you need to add more buff or white to your color that you're doing just so it uh, creates a, a more um, opaque paint. I've seen, I've seen quite a few um, butterflies this year. Didn't see many last year, but I've seen quite a few this year, which is good. The one thing I haven't seen, and I think it's weird, is I used to have a ton of squirrels, and I've hardly seen any this year. So I don't know whether I've got a hawk or owl living around here or what, <laughs> but I haven't seen too many. So I'm ha I think something's been having a snack of them. Hear my son upstairs. Somebody's some doggos got in trouble. Some years we have swarms of huge mosquitoes. Um, yes, I like. Uh, we had no mosquitoes this year, really, Devin. Which has been awesome. May have been too hot in the spring. Yeah, that could be. Not used to that heat that you got this year. You probably didn't have many black flies either then. I know. Your way, there's huge black flies. Kind of carry you away, they're so big. <laughs> I might have to go back in and do a little bit of touching up with the line work, but that's why you have your pattern. 
I can still see some of it in in the uh, background, but we'll see. very many black flies either now that you mention it. Yeah, we didn't have hardly any either. And it, my um, little town is has uh, three rivers around it. So I was very surprised. Actually, the mosquitoes weren't bad either. You never know. Just barely see this after I paint over it. So I think it's going to be all right, but I can always darken it with my highlights and my shadows too. And sometimes your background, if it's showing through a little bit, uh, the line work can act as a shadowed area. So I don't get too flustered. pattern in front of me just to keep an eye on spaces so I don't paint into the blue. Uh, butterfly has some. might have to go in around the butterfly a little bit. And here... There. That there is separated. Just a couple. Right here. This one. And I'm just going to fill in some of these just a little bit more. Just where the dark lines are that of the blue that's showing through too much. I'm just going to throw a little bit extra on there just to cover those up. Okay, 
Janet. Good to see you. I think it's time for the nursing home. I forgot it was Thursday. I have no clue how hot got here so fast. I know. I feel, feel ya. Uh, I'm, I do a lot of this too, many times a week. <laughs> it's like, what day is it? All right, so I think I'll bring you in a little so you can see what I'm doing a little closer. Oh, that dog. Do you hear her? She's just, she loves to talk. She's cute. It's really good that she is. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, she's a dickens, that's for sure. I missed a couple in there. Because this is barely... I think I'm just going to cover that too. What's that? Barely here. <laughs> she likes to terrorize Chloe because Chloe's a little chicken. <laughs> Coco, she'll she'll tell her to stop, but <laughs> Chloe is. Oh, poor thing. So we have to protect her. Because she just jumps all over her and then... <laughs> My neighbor brought over his new little blue healer puppy. Six weeks or nine weeks old. It takes everything I have not to run out and get one. <laughs> they are cute. <laughs> they are. But oh my god, the amount of work. Janet... If it were for my son and it's his dog, him doing most of the uh, training, it just reminds me why I won't be getting another dog as a puppy anyways. It's like having kids again. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, now. I want to take a, let's see, I want a scruffy brush, or if you have um, a grainer, let's see, where did it go, you can use that, and I do have one here somewhere. Just use this. We'll see. Now, what I want to do is in between uh, the petals, it's going to be darker. So I'm going to have to have a fairly narrow or a small brush. I might have to use probably. looking see what I got here we'll see if this works I don't know if it'll get flat enough it doesn't look like it let me see I want something with a very chiseled edge no that's not gonna work or you could use I guess you could use a, a round for this and you want to get some more um, of that yellow and I've been using the cadmium yellow light and we're going to darken this next one, um, shade so we want some raw umber also so I'm just going to put a tad of raw umber on the side here
And I'm going to take a little bit of it. Not much because it's fairly powerful. Let's see if this will work. Kind of makes it a greenish yellow shade. You could add a little bit of uh, red to that and might or a raw sienna might work. Let's see. I want it not quite as green so to fix that. Let's see. Mars Black. There's some red. I'm just going to add a, a touch of red. Not going to use a lot. Just to change up this color. I want more of a sienna color. There we go. A little more yellow. There. So it's more of a goldy sienna color. Okay. Now I'm going to paint in the center, starting from the center. See how they have the kind of um, streaks of a bit of this color and right behind the uh, petal you see the shadowed areas. And this is all in the same color. So if you can find, I'd rather a flat. Let me see if I can still find one. There's got to be one here somewhere. I've got a Kerbillion brushes here. But I want, you know how it is, you just have to have the exact one. And you never find it. <laughs> so here's a shader. That might work. Let's see. So. This is. Uh, Grainer, I guess you, this one's called. Let's see. Uh, oh, it doesn't say. It's just a quarter inch. Looks like a grainer or um, a rake. Let's see if this works or not. Just have to play with it. I'm just putting it on one side and swishing it to wherever I have the overlaps will be the shaded areas. Now this can be a little monotonous, but um, if you want a flower to look kind of 3D, you have to do this. Some areas are darker than others, so yeah, a little of a thicker coat. And then you just, using the grainer part of the brush, I can sweep up from the center. It gives that streaking.
and we'll add highlights so don't worry too much if it's looking kind of weird because the highlights are what uh, actually make it pop. I think I'll try it with that. Where'd that brush go? Let's get in the center here. This here. Dark. And you have to pay attention to your reference photo, so take a look at that water on my brush. I'm basically just going around these petals first, putting in some of these um, shadowed areas. Just swiping up and down. So you're looking for what what petals are overlapping. So the ones that are on top where it will be lighter and the ones behind will be shadowed. So you just kind of have to look at your drawing and uh, study it for a minute. If you want you could actually take a um, graphite pencil and shade in those areas if you want to do it that way first so you have more of an idea instead of trying to figure it out while you're painting. Thanks for coming, Devin. Have a good day. This definitely isn't um, a painting that you can do in 20 minutes. You have to study what you're doing. 
and just paint. Enjoy it. Little bits at a time. This is fairly watered down, that um, so I'm able to kind of push it into the uh, uh, yellow part. Dorothy, good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. Yes, good day, thanks. Being slow stitch. Oh, awesome. You've done some really nice work, Dot. I remember the ones you showed me. I like slow stitch. Like, I like the look of slow stitching, but I don't think I have the patience for it. For some reason, I don't know why, but oh, you got your quiz at eight.
just trying to see my way around all of these. Where they are. one's fairly dark. One thing I find when doing this type of work, um, you really have to take your time. Don't rush. Because when you rush, I uh, this is for me, I've found, you rush and then you skip stuff or you say oh that's good enough and then after you're done you go and look at it and you think oh I wish I hadn't brushed that I could have done better <laughs> that's just me though that's why it's very hard doing um, streams you tend to automatically want to rush And then I always look at it later and see a ton of things that I know I could have done that a whole lot better. And it's not being critical of my work. It's just knowing that I rushed because I know what I'm capable of doing. And when you rush, you make Um, exceptions, I guess, of what is good enough. And it should be enjoyable, not, not a rushed thing that you're trying to get done. So it's all about getting done. It's not about that. It's about enjoying the process of arting. This one looks a little wonky somehow. That's that one there. I think I missed one. Mm. I did, I think. That's 
there. I think there's one here. missed somehow and I missed one and here so I'm gonna make up a little bit of that color off the side and fix that one here. Oh, I see. I see. Made that one too wide. And this one. And then there's one in here that I didn't put in. So, oh, too much water. Dark, dark butterflies in there. I'm probably going to put in another um, very dark area. More dark than what I'm using now. Do I see anything else? This um, may end up being a little bit longer than I normally do. <laughs> I think it's just one flower.
Okay. Now, I think I'm going to add a little bit of this white here to this mix. Just a little bit of the color mixed with the white, but I want it very light. And now I'm going to just do the tips. going towards the um, direction of the petal, the way it's growing. You don't want a load of, it's almost dry brushing with this greener. This will separate your petals a little more. One a little bit more of a line there, separating them. I'm just tapping the very end of this brush, so I don't want too much paint on it. Just to
just at the tips of some of them too. You might want to put a little bit more highlight. Downside a little. curve here. We'll have the highlight on the top. Doing these types of flowers is more about detail, I find. Now you could probably uh, do a one stroke with a loaded brush. Um, it would probably work. You'd have to practice before you did it, but I might try that one time. See if I can get it to work. I do like the one stroke um, when you're using multi uh, colors on your brush. You get that streaking. I do like that. There is an act to it, though, I must say. It's something you can't do right off the bat. Thanks, Dorothy. in here. I'm just using the side of my brush to get some of these uh, thinner lines.
You could probably use a um, smaller brush if you wanted to. Bye, Zandro. Thanks for popping in. Have a good day. Now I'm just uh, putting these more very fine details in with this brush. Just paying attention to the shadows and the highlights. I'll have to add a few um, even darker areas. Hey Brenda, good to see you. Okay, Let's see if we do a little bit of glazing. Brighten this up a little bit. Let's see what it does. Do I like it or not? Well, it's not bad. I just want a little bit of a brighter area, but I don't want a definite line. Just glazing with a cadmium yellow light just to brighten that up a little. It's looking a little dull. And then I can always go back in and add more darks. Get 
Yeah, it kind of glows. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see. If I want a little bit of crop umber. Some red. Some yellow. A darker color here. We're on the browny side. Actually, I could go into green too. Very, um, let's see how am I going to do this? I'm just dabbing one side of my my brush and running it along the side of wherever petal I want it put a little bit more shadow in you kind of have to um, clean up your brush every once in a while because it can get um, kind of contaminated too far. Okay, let's try a little bit of this brush. And the, some of these areas have to be fairly dark. Let's mix a little bit more of that up. Dark, dark.
going to have to move it around a little bit. Just finding my very, very deepest colors here. holding my breath. <laughs> Probably getting a little too detailed here, but I like detail, what can I say? Getting there.
Okay, I think I have what I want. All right, I'm going to take um, a little bit of that dark green or that phthalo green I used in the background up to glaze and add some of the raw umber to it to darken it and I'm just gonna put some very very dark greens in the center areas Just here and there. Just here. It's actually where the stamens are. So there's a few in there. And in here. Fairly dark. They have a little bit of green. This one has some green. Then some lighter, let's just add a little bit of white to that mix. Mm, a little bit more yellow. But I don't want it on the blue side, I want it more on the, the green side. And I'm just going to put in some stamens. Just dots. And then a little more, don't make them all one color, just kind of mix it up, add some other colors to it. You could do this with a Posca too. Um, put a little yellow to this reddish color and maybe a little white to it, add more gold. Oh, too much water on my brush. 
not light enough. Mixing in. Just want something a little bit lighter. Okay. Hi Dorothy, have a great day or evening. <laughs> now I'm going to make some of that darker olive green by just adding a little bit of um, raw umber to that mix. So I can take, make a stem. A little bit of highlight here and there, just on one side, more on the bottom part than in between the petals because it'll be much darker underneath. Now, let's dry that and then we're going to put this butterfly in. So the butterfly, you can make it whatever butterfly you want. Um, this one, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of a brownish sienna color. So, let's see. That's some of that. Some red. Some yellow. Red. Okay, that looks about right. Mm. More red, I think. There. All right. So we'll just most of it. I think I'm going to just do the whole thing in this color and then I will go over top of it with um, either a Posca or a small brush. And I'll leave a little bit of a line so I can see what where my um, wings separate.
Come here. And I think that comes out a little bit more than I must have missed it on the The body needs to go into so just enough paint to get that body in. Let's see. Hit two was the same color, basically. And dry that so we can put in our marks. pretty this butterfly. Um, I think I'm going to put my pattern back on so I can get these marks in the right spot. But I'm going to need a lighter, um, a white instead, transfer paper. This uh, is a white transfer paper, and I left that on. I didn't take it off, so it should be in the right spot. So I'm just going to take my pen, and redo the marks, so I can actually put the divisions in again. Hopefully this is right. I don't know if I didn't check the drawing versus the actual picture. But like I said, you could also use a collage piece and make it a mixed media.
These little circle swirl things. And put her its eyes in. And there's a little mark there and actually the legs. Okay, hopefully, yeah, not bad. Okay. So there is the look of the butterfly. So, there's the butterfly. So let's see if we can get this put in. So I'm just going to use the small round and I think what I'm going to do I'm going to put these marks back in with marker the lines but these here are kind of a black um, so I could use a bigger brush or a, try this, and I'm going to get a black out in craft paint, mainly because it's opaque, and then a, kind of a soft green, looks like, uh, Almost this color. So, oh, that's gloss. That will do. Um, mint julep green should do. Gonna squirt a little dab. Some mint. I have this brush, it's a Princeton round blender. And it'll give me that round shape, so that's why I picked it. And actually I should do the black first. Do the black first and then we'll do the green over top. So, let's see, then this here, there's one there. looks like they're not like definite they're very um, Um, kind of blurry looking. Let's see that one there. And then these things are the others. And this 
big area of um, black. I'm going to take my small brush now. This is fiddly, mainly because of the small areas, but I guess I should paint the green in first of that. Let's see. That. All right, let's put the green in. And then we can do the Pink or the what do you call it? Julep. Green julep. Get out as much of the I want a fairly dry brush because I don't want it to be watery. And then let's better dry that first because I want it to stay green, not get muddied. Alright, and then I'm going to, with this green on my brush, I'm going to put a little of this yellow afterwards into it too. It's because there's a bit of yellow in there. But it's like, um, You're leaving a, a little edge. That one there. Oh, nearly went into the black. And then this here, I can do it with the, actually with a smaller brush. And I can just go back in with the um, liner of Posker or a pen and fix that all up. I think I have to go in with a bigger brush to give that little sweep of. it in there and that's white kind of white and this is green and oh, too much water on my brush soak that up
And then there's this kind of a, I don't know, whitish. It's got a little bit of yellow in it, I guess. We'll just add a little bit of yellow. And that goes in here. Oh, I'm going to have to add white to it. More white. Water on my brush. These. And there's, these are a little bit multicolored. Even have a little more yellow in it. bit of that yellow in the top part here too. And kind of in the centers of these. And this. That. This is more like white. A few white spots in there. And I'll do the rest with the uh, Posca. Body's got some white on it. You can do that with the Posca. Alright, that. And then a little bit of black. I missed one. Okay. Okay, let's dry that and then we'll put in the marker. see if I can take some of that white off. I'm not sure if I can. But we'll see. Can we? 
Yes, it will come off. Okay. I think I'll just dull it down a little bit so it's not in your face. So we can just see the a bit of an outline. So I can still mark it with the pen. So I'm going to take a mark or um, a sharpie. Let's see. Oh, oh flat. There are you. Thanks. All right. So it is outlined. The head is dark. And you can't get too detailed, but let's see this here. It's probably not going to be exact, but a good indication of what it is. And then it's kind of just dabbed around this, the uh, outer edge of the wing. It's not really a line. And there's a little bit of, of um, white also. So I'll have to put some of that in too. If you used... Um, craft paint, you could do this with colored pencil too. Black. dots yeah I 
missed this one. I'll go back in there and put some more in. This is black too. Like that. That's black. And this is black. Kind of. So this one goes like this. There's a center one. Comes down to here. And this one goes off of that. And then that. His antennas need, oh there's a little thingy midui. And his antenna like that. Okay, so then just a little bit of white, showing how to paint pictures is very helpful, I learned more on paint. Yep, sometimes uh, you do, you learn more with doing. Everybody learns differently, but it's always good to have some 
reference because sometimes there's little bits of pieces that you're not too sure how to approach it. That's when it's good to have just a bit of um, reference to whatever you're trying to do. But yeah, you don't know if you can do it until you, you try it. Definitely. Okay, so I can put, there's some little dabs. in there. Let's see. Some here. Some more white. Oh yeah, I was going to put that in. Missed, missed a little bit. It's probably, you wouldn't know it, but I know it. <laughs> You're welcome, Brenda. If I could help, that's great. Alright, and then I can always put a little highlights on the petals and the really uh, bright areas. That sometimes you have a little bit of a real bright area. those in if you want. Could be something very simple. Checking, seeing what I see. If I need anything. Any light areas. Alright. Now I still have the... Uh, leaf to do and the leaf is very simple you can get take a very uh, a wide brush and add some of this 
paint that I already have here. Mix some colors in with it. Tone it down a little bit. Just follow the growth of the plant. I just kind of mixed in a bunch of the colors I already had from my palette. Just something simple. Don't have to get too elaborate. A lighter color. I want a, a lighter um, vein. Okay. All right. Let's dry that. See what we got. We could probably fix the edge up a little bit.
just a very simple, um, what do you call it, impressionistic leaf. <laughs> Okay, so let's take the tape off. See what we can get. Probably satisfying taking the tape off. <laughs> All right. And I think I'm done. So there's our finished piece. And you could do whatever butterfly you want, but yeah, use up your jelly prints. They're great backgrounds for your paintings, especially when you're just practicing. Thanks, Kathleen. So I'll let you guys go, and I hope you'll give this a try. Like I said, um, the traceable will be on the community page in the members. And um, hopefully you will tag me on Instagram and uh, show me what you've done. I've seen a few of them, and I think you guys are doing great. And uh, the main thing, enjoy what you're doing. All right. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.